from Zambia. I was born and raised in Zambia. I was in, uh, in arranged marriage, which is very common back home. I was 16 years old. He was 42. When I was in arranged marriage, because something which is arranged, there's no love. But unfortunately, you have no choice. You're a woman, you have to live with your husband regardless. Because I have to endure a lot of pain and a lot of challenges in my life, dealing with uh, all this domestic violence and trying to find a better place for my kid and a good environment because I didn't want my kid to be exposed. So in the protection center office, we have open doors, so that means people can come in um, whenever. I have to um, get the protection order in place. Then we came to the King County Courthouse and then we came to this application to get the protection order. Usually they're in crisis mode, like something has just happened, and we're usually the first person they, they tell their story to. So we try to make them feel as safe and comfortable as possible. A lot of times they'll come in with like bruises or, um, or marks from an incident that just happened. So we do like a lot of legal work helping them get protection orders, but we also do a lot of counseling as well. And it's like I've never been in the court before, so I was like so scared, like how am I going to cope, how am I going to do this, but the support that I had and then it's just encourage. So we try to help people file orders to protect them from their abuser and we, um, we walk them through that process and how it's going to be in court and, and that we'll be there for them like every step of the way. It was amazing because sometimes you don't really know about the laws and rules and how to get this protection order so it's always good to have a guideline. Well I remember 30 years ago when this idea came up uh, I we thought, well, this is a really great service to the public, but it's not traditional prosecutor role. You know, we charge cases and try people in court and get convictions. But it was the women who were behind this, uh, Sherry Yates in particular, uh, really convinced Norm Mailing at the time, who was the prosecutor, that this would save lives. Prior to the program, they would go to the clerk's office and they would say, I'm, and they, sometimes they didn't know what to call it. I'm, I, I'm a domestic violence victim, I need to file for something. And they would be handed, as I said, seven to nine pages of paperwork. And it can be really intimidating. There's a lot of check boxes and like legal jargon. And you're also in like a super heightened state of crisis and trauma. So you, you're just also not just thinking straight. And if you didn't have a navigator to help you get from the front door to the court and to then make sure that that order is filed and gets in the hands of the police, uh, that's really meaningless. What was needed were advocates who could actually do the, take the time, sit down and go through the paperwork, listen to the, the situation that the petitioners were going through, be able to assist them in completing the paperwork, as well as doing some safety planning and providing them resources in the community because prior to advocates, none of that was done. A lot of these uh, survivors have never spoken about the abuse. So being able to have someone that they can trust that believes them, that you know, believes what they're saying, what they're, they have gone through is really important. This is like probably the bravest act that they've done. And for you to be able to be there and support them is really huge. The new element in the last year that we've added to the protection order program is the firearm removal portion of it. And so our advocates are now trained to begin to talk to petitioners when they come in the door. Are there guns in the house? Have you ever been threatened with them? Do you know what they are? We have little pictures of them so they can try to identify what they look like. Uh, and we will go and ask the court to remove those firearms f during the time that we know is most dangerous during the separation period. I think there's a much higher level of awareness, um, the, the questions that are being asked and the conversations that are happening. Um, are at a whole different level from when I started doing this work and um, I think especially over the last couple of years. So after all this separation and then I have my kids, I have protection order, that's given me the power and the strength and I was like okay there's nothing to stop me from doing what I want and now I'm so glad that I was part of this community where there's so much help which is very grateful.